When Saruman abandoned his mission and turned to evil, it was one of the greatest betrayals in the history of Varda. He was an emissary of the Valar, one of the five wizards that were sent to guide and help the free people in their wars against Sauron. Yet he abandoned his duties when they needed him most, and he joined forces with their mortal enemy. Why did Saruman choose to serve Sauron and follow this evil path? And why did he hate Gandalf so much? Hey guys, it's Carl here. And in today's episode, we'll be discussing Saruman's fall to evil and his hatred of Gandalf. So Gandalf and Saruman had quite an interesting and complicated relationship from the moment they first set foot in Middle-earth. For most of the elves regarded Saruman as the head and the greatest of the wizard order. Yet Curden the shipwright saw something special in Gandalf, a powerful aura of respect and wisdom. And so he gave him his elven ring of power, Narya, the ring of fire. Even though Gandalf tried to keep this gift a secret, Saruman would eventually learn of it, and he felt insulted. His pride was injured, for he believed that he was more deserving of this ring than Gandalf. And in that moment, a seed of jealousy and resentment was planted within him, that would slowly grow in the years to come. Now these wizards were sent to rally resistance against Sauron throughout the lands of Middle-earth. And while Gandalf focused on the western lands, Saruman traveled to the east. The men of these lands were much more dangerous and evil, for they used to serve Sauron and Morgoth, and their culture was heavily influenced by these dark lords. I wonder if Saruman's time among these men might have had an effect on him, even perhaps just a small one in his fall from grace. I have no doubt that his experience would have been very different from Gandalf's, since he had to somehow plant seeds of resistance within a people that was heavily corrupted. And so the things that he saw on this land might have changed him. Just to be clear, this is simply my own speculation, though I feel that it is a crucial part in Saruman's history that is worth discussing. Now in the year 2463, some of the wisest beings in the land, such as Gandalf, Galadriel, Elrond and Saruman, came together to form the White Council. They hoped to combine their efforts to resist Sauron, and they would need a leader to unite and guide them through the tough times that lay ahead. At first, Galadriel recommended Gandalf for this position, though he refused to take up the mantle of command, and so it fell upon Saruman instead, who had a wealth of knowledge on Sauron's devices. Even though he was now in command, Saruman's pride was injured once more, for he felt insulted that Gandalf was the White Council's first choice, and from this day, he would begin to study the lore of the Rings of Power. Now Saruman's intentions were still good, even though his desire for mastery and his pride had grown to dangerous levels, and in the year 2759, he took charge of Isengard. He still hoped to defend the West, though there was now something twisted about his aspirations, for it was of crucial importance that he was the one to lead the free people in their defense against Sauron, even if there was someone more capable, and this was a reflection of his pride and his feeling of self-importance. It was also why he kept the Palantir of Isengard a secret from the rest of the White Council, for even though it allowed him to extend his influence and knowledge, by then he had already stopped cooperating with the White Council towards a mutual goal, out of his pride and his hatred and jealousy of Gandalf. All of this arrogance had started to corrupt Saruman morally, and by the year 2851 he had his own agenda and evil aspirations, and this is only made sadder by the fact that back then, Saruman had yet to make contact with Sauron through the Palantir, for that would take place in the year 2000. And so, Saruman's descent into evil was his own choice, and the product of his overblown ego and arrogance. Now, Saruman had dedicated many years to studying Sauron's methods and the Rings of Power, for he hoped to find some way to defeat him. Though as he fell deeper into evil, he began to appreciate and envy Sauron's work, instead of hating it and he now saw Sauron as a rival. The one artifact that fascinated him the most was the One Ring, and Saruman was filled with a burning desire to find it and claim it, so that he could use it to shape the world as he saw fit, and he began to mislead the council by suggesting that the One Ring was lost forever in the sea, and that Sauron would never manage to reclaim it. All of this was a trick, so that they would lay down their guard until he found the One Ring. And this was also why Saruman had stopped the White Council from attacking Sauron in Dol Guldur. For as long as Sauron's power kept growing, the ring would try harder to return to its master, and it might reveal itself and allow Saruman to claim it. And so, he was ready to risk Sauron's rise in power 
for his own selfish desires. Now while all of these events unfolded, Saruman's hatred and jealousy for Gandalf intensified, and it almost became a weird obsession. He knew that Gandalf was stronger than him, and that he had more influence, and so he began to intentionally treat Gandalf with less respect, and he was always ready to contradict him, or to mock his advice during their council meetings. Yet deep down, Saruman paid attention to everything that Gandalf said, and he gave his words much thought, and he also began to subconsciously imitate him in some ways. For example, Saruman used to mock Gandalf for smoking hobbit pipeweed, though after he tried some in secret, he found out that he enjoyed it also, and he took up this habit. However, he was paranoid that Gandalf would make a fool of him for changing his mind, and so he tried to hide it by entering the Shire in secret. Later on, he would even start to meddle in the Shire, because it gave him some satisfaction knowing that he was extending his influence in an area that was dear to Gandalf. Now Saruman's paranoia had grown to incredible levels, and he was convinced that all the other members of the White Council were driven by their own plans and agenda to increase their power and influence, and that there was no way that Gandalf was simply interested in the Shire because he cared and liked the Hobbits. No, there had to be a more selfish reason behind it, and Saruman began to suspect that the Shire must somehow be connected to the One Ring in Gandalf's mind. Ironically, when Saruman learned that the One Ring was in the hands of a hobbit for all this time, he believed that his suspicions were correct and that Gandalf planned to take it. He also felt that this was the greatest insult that he ever received, for the Rings of Power were his area of expertise, and he thought that Gandalf must have intentionally hid this information from him, and the fact that Gandalf was right to distrust him only made Saruman madder. There's a really fascinating passage in the Unfinished Tales, that gives us a glimpse of the White Council meeting in the year 2851. In it, Saruman was advising against an attack on Dol Guldur, while Gandalf smoked in silence, and this annoyed Saruman, and he ended up referring to the hobbits as peasants, and he stated that he had no time to waste on them. In response, Gandalf gave Saruman a very keen look, and he blew out a great ring of smoke, followed by many smaller rings behind it, and he held out his hand as if to grasp them, and they vanished. Gandalf then left Saruman without saying any other word. The simple action fueled Saruman's paranoia, and he wondered if the smoke rings represented the rings of power, and that Gandalf's gesture was a sign that there was some connection between the hobbits and these rings. Now of course this was just paranoia, because back then the ring was still in Gollum's possession, and it had nothing to do with the Shire. There's actually another script which adds to this event, though Tolkien later crossed it out. In it, he explained that Gandalf was angered by Saruman's insolence, and he wanted to show Saruman that he was suspicious of his desire to possess the Rings of Power, and that it was a warning that they would elude him. He also says that if Gandalf had known that in the future the Ring would have a connection with the Shire, then he would have never risked doing such a gesture. Now even though Gandalf was a bit suspicious of Saruman, he could have never imagined that he would stoop so low, and Saruman didn't trust him much either. He didn't respect or admire Gandalf, but something about him made Saruman very uneasy. He was always uncertain on how much Gandalf could see through his lies and perceive his true thoughts and agenda, and so he grew afraid of him, and he would avoid meeting him as much as possible, and by the year 2953, Saruman sent out spies to watch all of Gandalf's movements. In the years to come, Saruman began to create his own force to topple Sauron, and he crafted his own lesser ring of power. He would finally become ensnared by Sauron in the year 3000, after making contact through the Palantir, and Saruman believed that the free people stood no chance against the might of Mordor, and that he must ally with Sauron to ensure his survival. Saruman had no intention of being a servant, and he still planned on ruling himself, though this alliance offered him some safety so that he would be on the winner's side anyway, and if he managed to somehow get his hands on the ring, he could even use it to challenge Sauron and defeat him. This is why he summoned Gandalf to Isengard, for he hoped that Gandalf would share the exact location of the One Ring, though as we all know, there was no chance that Gandalf would break, and Saruman was left empty-handed. Now after Isengard's destruction, Gandalf offered Saruman a chance of redemption, and for a moment Saruman considered it, before his pride, hatred and paranoia got the better of him. He had the need to be, or to feel important, and to be better than others, an incredible ego, 
and I believe that this was the main driving force behind his fall to evil. According to Tolkien, it seems that when the wizards were given physical forms, they also became more prone to being corrupted. And the exact quote is, The Istari, being clad in bodies of Middle-earth, might even as men and elves fall away from their purposes and do evil, forgetting the good in the search for power to affect it. We also know that Sauron had once been very similar to Saruman, which is why he could understand him so quickly and guess what he's thinking. Both of them were Maiar spirits that had once served Aole, the smith of the Valar. And there is a subtle theme in the Lord of the Rings, in which beings that were associated with the art of creation were more prone to corruption. I suppose it's because the art of creation can be incredibly rewarding, but it can also lead to feelings of superiority, ownership, pride and ambition. And all of these traits can bring you closer to corruption, unless your own wisdom holds you back. Another of Saruman's flaws was that he seemed to use Gandalf as a yardstick to measure where he stood in terms of power and importance. Yet this caused him to stagnate in a pool of arrogance and pride. For on one end, he knew that Gandalf had more influence, yet he also felt superior to him. I feel that Saruman is a quintessential example of a person that gets stuck in a loop of bitterness and hatred, as he sinks lower and lower and lower, until he forgets what it's like not to have these negative feelings. They consume you until you feel that the whole world is against you. Anyway, I think we can end this video on that philosophical thought, and I hope you enjoyed it. Do you think that Saruman's character deserves any sympathy, and how would things have changed if he remained loyal to the free people? And do you believe that he is a representation of some of the worst traits that plague mankind? As always, I'd like to thank my patrons, who have really helped to elevate this channel. It wouldn't be the same without you. And I would like to express how grateful I am for your support, especially our wizard tier patrons, T. Gorman, Mike Feeney, Roland Mervold, and Jacob Williams. If you too would like to help support this channel while unlocking some cool perks, I'll be leaving a link to my Patreon page in the video description below. I'll also be leaving links to our Instagram, Facebook, Discord, and Twitter communities, so follow us if you'd like to have some extra Lord of the Rings content in your day-to-day -day lives. As always, if you enjoyed this video leave a like and subscribe to join our fellowship today. I hope to see you all in my next video, where together we'll once again explore the magical world and lore of Middle-earth.